Okay, so uh, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. I am Brett Fogel, your host. And this today we're going to, you know, like every week, we cover the news, we go over the charts and give you my insights on what's going on in the markets and uh, the TLDR on that. So it's pulled back exactly where we were talking about it would last week. So there's no surprise. And um, we'll look at both options. Never know with crypto, but uh, and I do think we come back maybe a little bit more and then hopefully find some support at 38K and then push higher. So we'll see, but we'll certainly look at all the options. So I'm um, starting out with the uh, news here. Uh, we've got a Bitcoin, yeah, lots of liquidations yesterday. It was, uh, it's up to 500 million in liquidations. Uh, 300, that was uh, Bitcoin, uh, this person saying, but Bitcoin entering never before seen era. So a lot of people talking about a super cycle. I'm going to show you some charts where I think we do go much higher faster, how that could happen. And why you don't want to be late because, um, you know, consensus is dangerous and everybody's has complacency right now that, hey, we're going to new highs. The Bitcoin for your cycle is back. I think the last cycle, people were sort of uneasy. Is it going to repeat itself like it always does? And then it did. And now it's sort of assumed that that's going to happen. So just to kind of do a quick jump ahead on this, did a study on some where we think the next top could be in the next bottom, actually. Uh, maybe if we have time, I'll get into that. That's a fairly interesting study. But, um, you, you know, I, there's another chart I'll show you when we come back where I think we could push up much higher, faster. It doesn't mean it has to happen, uh, but uh, I have uh, on occasion earned my nickname, uh, Crypto Domus, which is a little bit silly, but um, uh, we'll go from there. We'll show you there in a minute. Uh, this chart here, before we go back to the news though, is, um, you know, as I've had on here for a while, I thought either we'd push up to that golden pocket around 48K, 50K, as you can see here, we had a bit of a pullback, which is expected. We broke out of the trend channel. Typically that happens when you're breaking out of a trend channel so is it forming support here to go higher mm, i believe that's it's it's 50 50 you know nobody knows at this point i think we come back in this range around maybe even down to 38k and then push up to that golden pocket and at that point some kind of a pullback here so i'll move this for us since we've sort of gone out of that range or maybe we'll do it more like this so we'll have to see uh this is an unknown but it's okay you know, I had a buddy message me this morning. He's like, yeah, you know, uh, I'm not worried. I picked up some Bitcoin around 1500 I've been holding. Uh, if that's you, uh, just hold on. You know, you guys are good. Uh, but we will uh, talk about some of the other indicators that we use to get a finer tune feeling on the markets. I do want to get an overall feel of why this is happening, what's going on in the markets. You know, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. I've said that a thousand times. Really, the news is a catalyst. And oftentimes, price stalls out. And it just needs a push one way or the other. I think part of this push that we've seen, just to jump back to the chart for a minute, is um, it was a short squeeze and liquidations cascading and you know stop losses triggering liquidations. And I think this is what this mostly was. But as you can see, this trend channel, it was still heading higher anyway. So a pullback here, all those liquidated longs out of the way. Uh, if that's you, I already here but don't play with margin uh be very careful with margin and uh i've had some experience with that it's uh on this micro level pretty dangerous manipulated market so our edge is on swing trading and uh, catching these swings and trading these channels as we're looking at here i had this question mark on here last week this same chart without that uh, red mark keep in mind everybody who had eight weeks eight solid weeks higher of higher prices that's generally about the longest it goes i think the record was 10 weeks i'll have to double check that so you look that you know this pullback not terribly uh important don't worry uh it was a nominal maybe like a six percent drop i think when i did the math on that and uh we are clearly in an uptrend though so if you are here panicking saying what's going on uh don't worry about it too much so let's just unpack this a little bit i'll turn on my uh, handy uh tool here to highlight anything important so let's see, the uh, trading session saw crypto futures lose 500 million. Okay, so that was a those in the futures markets, those are cash settled, so not a big impact on Bitcoin's price. And uh, But they are also noticed there was a lot of open interest on that. And essentially, if you're not clear on what that is, I used to own and founded the Options University. So open interest is when you've got a lot of leverage on one side of the market betting that it's going to go in a certain direction. So if there was a lot of open interest in open uh, in the long side, there's a lot of opportunity there. 
to uh, crash pull markets back and uh, grab that liquidity. So, you know, often that's an indicator when there's a huge imbalance on open interest on your derivatives that can uh, lead to opportunity for the other side. And so uh, it's worth paying attention to, at least being aware of that can happen. So let's see. And that's what it says. Steep volatility impacted highly leveraged long and shorts, you know, 500 million in liquidations and some of the major coins going down as much as 12 percent. Uh, we can look at that as well. But uh, what was interesting is, as this is saying, Bitcoin, whip, uh, Bitcoin whipsawed down here and then it bounced. Uh, I'll show you a chart where it came right down exactly to its 50 week exponential moving average. And so some of these others here did the same and bounced as well. So that's encouraging that it stopped there and that it was somewhat planned or managed. Uh, where we get into a lot of trouble is on those cascading liquidations when we are in a downtrend. That's a big difference. And um, certainly opportunity there. There was one day I tripled my account size shorting Bitcoin in a day uh, on these uh, you know, aggressively hitting the short side. But the uh, problem with that is the you're trading against advanced AIs. If you aren't aware of that, the market makers of today are not people. Uh, they are advanced algorithms, AI. And if you remember that AI beat the world's best chess player 20 years ago, imagine what's available now. OK, so um, certainly there are people managing these AIs, but uh, on the micro level of the day trading level, uh, it's it's tough, it's tricky, because specifically you'll as humans, we look for patterns. I didn't mean to get into a day trading conversation, by the way. But, um, you know, I think the reason I'm talking about it, there is a, a lot of FOMO that happens when the new bull is back. And uh, it happened last cycle, it'll continue to happen. And people sort of panic, how can I become rich in crypto? And they start thinking about leverage. And I want to caution all of you not to uh, be lured into that. If you don't know what you're doing, and meaning you've lost 50 or 100,000 in the past learning, uh, <clears throat> stay away from that. My best recommendations, because you're uh, what I was getting at is these patterns that as humans we like to recognize. These will play out, let's say, several times a day in the daytime U.S. markets. And then typically what happens is you go back in and say, oh, look at this. It's setting up again, but it's a different algo. It's a different market maker. It's kind of shifted over into the Asian uh, sessions. And, and then uh, then you'll give it all back. Uh, and that's typically what happens. So anyway, the good news is we are in the right place at the right time. And the uh, gains that I believe we'll see here this cycle are really going to be uh, going to be great. And we'll look at some charts here in a moment. And uh, let's just see. Uh, I want to skim the news here. I won't talk about Doge and Sheepcoin. Uh, these, uh, you know, we kind of stick with the higher quality coins. And um, let's see. I kind of unpack the, the bulk of this. So we've got that as some news. And that's not necessarily new. Let me go over Crypto Panic, which is a great crypto news aggregator. Um, interesting. SEC is going after Richard Hart. He's the flamboyant uh, crypto guy. He's behind Hexcoin and a few others. He's usually on uh, YouTube's with his Rolexes, and uh, uh, he's questionable. So SEC going after him. No surprise there. The bull market bull run has begun. There we go. All right. So that's a video. Pompliano is great. If you don't follow him on Twitter, he's partners with Mark Yusko, who we recently interviewed for the Future of Crypto Summit. And uh, and so that's that's good news. And let's see. I think what I need to do, though, is I need to turn back on the green screen. Still kind of green uh, on the background. All right. Tell you what, I'm going to put on my crypto mask, my crypto uh, M3 crypto hat. There you go. Got a little bit of a green tint in the background today. Didn't know that. That's all good. By the way, if you guys like our hats here, if you want to uh, know how to get a free uh, M3 crypto hat, I'll tell you. In a moment, Anthony Popola, you know, great, um, you know, very smart, uh, has a lot of good things to say. So I won't go into that right now. It's a video we talked about. There's not a whole lot of news. The news was that all of these, uh, all of well, here's something. Else. the The news was that the crypto came back down. It was profit taking and going after the le leverage longs. There's a lot of else for you there. And Bitcoin is down. Alt coins are soaring. So I did post on Facebook. Yesterday, uh, maybe the weekend, altcoin rally incoming. Typically, when uh, people take profits in Bitcoin, they don't like to go into fiat, put it into cash, defeats the purpose. Often, they will put it into altcoins and other crypto. 
So if you don't know that, uh, now you do. And so that's generally why the you know Bitcoin leads, Bitcoin dominance goes up, meaning the majority of money flowing into Bitcoin. And then when that starts getting a bit toppy, you see that money flowing into Ethereum. Ethereum dominance goes up and then into the altcoins, the higher quality altcoins, and then into the proverbial shit coins toward the end of the rally. So and then everyone goes into stable coins kind of progressively along the way. So I don't want to spend too much time on the news here today. Um, Anyway, here's this guy. Uh, a picture says, picture's worth a thousand words. Uh, is this somebody that you should be trusting and buying crypto from? Um, you know, it is, uh, what is this uh, Gucci uh, sweatsuit here and his Rolexes? So he's not looking too happy there. We have a meme here. We've got Gary Gensler on the back of the plane and uh, Richard Hart not looking too happy here. Uh, he's uh, he's a bit of a, a pompous. Um, he, he's that typical crypto guy that you don't really want to have... Um, uh, representing you. And here you go. Richard Hart's scam activity involved. We've, so if if you're familiar with this, stay away from um, these uh, programs. And, uh, and and I was trading Hex a couple of years ago. It just, it moved very erratically. So I like things I can trust, the patterns I trust, the 25 years plus of trading, the certain patterns emerge. I've put in my 10,000 hours, you guys, to be the proverbial expert. And so you learn to stay away from things uh, that uh, don't make sense and are not uh, high probability and, and are high risk. So there you go. We could uh, hop over to the daily HODL just to see if there's anything else. Coin Telegram and um, let's see any comments here. And uh, OK, come some comments there. So just want to make sure we don't miss anything. Now, what is cool is if you guys don't know, we already have trading views started adding news onto the charts. So we'll leave that as the last uh, the last thing to look at. Otherwise, we'll put away the news. And if you guys have any news you want to share, sometimes you guys are can see things. I've only got two eyes last time I checked. Let's see. Cardano. Yeah, Cardano's been looking interesting. I think I'll, we want to see a little stronger break on the charts. Uh, Chainlink, I like this a lot. I'll show you my targets. There's some very high, uh, nice looking targets on that. And more strength against Bitcoin. Yeah, and some people, have, you know, I, I don't know how many of you guys trade sort of currencies, cryptos against each other. So Bitcoin versus Ethereum, you know, Bitcoin versus uh, Litecoin, Chainlink, things like that. That's a little little bit uh, trickier for most people. Generally, on this uh, class here, we talk about things in USD. That makes it easier to uh, to do that. But um, yeah, David says not yet. Uh, David, we could talk about that uh, when we have our next call. So uh, analyst issues warning for Dogecoin rival. Um, again, please stay away from these. I mean, this is these are lottery tickets. So uh, this person saying four week correction in the cards for altcoin. Uh, the we could have. I think we have a couple weeks of pullback and before we rocket higher into that final push before the BlackRock announcement. There's they're saying there's ninety nine percent chance BlackRock gets approval around January fifth or eighth. Uh, Yusko was saying that he believes that they're the only ones that will get it initially. So, but the SEC is going to get some backlash with that if they don't open it up to more of them. Now, if we get approvals on multiple ETFs for the US ETFs, spot uh, market ETFs, not futures, then we'll see a massive kind of push rally, I think. Um, but uh, if we just get BlackRock or, you know, we could see an initial spike and then a sell the news event and then it'll sort out. It, it's a big wild card. I would just hold your guns. I will talk a little bit about that. Uh, not financial advice here, but um, typically these big announcements, uh, either they pump going into it and then they people take profits on the news. That's the whales selling to it's, it's smart money selling to dumb money. Now, doesn't mean we're any of us are dumb. It's just we don't have access to the same information many times. Plenty of juice left in the tank for Solana. I agree. Solana's looking great. I'll tell you why that is. Let's see. Trader who nailed the bottom of the Bitcoin 2018 bear market. Well, that was two cycles ago. You know who nailed the bear market of 2021? We did. I was telling people to buy last December when we launched our M3 uh, Trader course, which we're about to reopen. Uh, people thought I was crazy. Uh, we also nailed the bottom. I had publicly predicted 16.5 would be the low back in May of 2022. And uh, I was a bit a bit early, but that's where we came down, spent about six months around 16.5, right down in this region. Of course, didn't know about FTX, but this was a, a region that uh, held here regardless. If this wasn't an area of interest, that FTX could have taken it down to 14K, maybe 12. There, there was a small chance we went down to 12.5. 
even to nine eight ninety seven nine seven eight five. There's a unfilled CMB gap still down here, just below ten k. So I was telling our students here, you know, put your limit orders in at ninety eight seventy five. If you get filled, it'll be fast and quick, and you'll have bragging rights at the country club. But uh, uh, we never got there. How many? How many of you guys were there with us and remember that? But um, yeah, Tony's saying, wish I'd loaded up at 16, right? You know, you just don't know with these things, but um, you know, I guess uh, even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. Uh, yeah, I had forecast that. Predict, you cannot predict these markets. The best thing you can do is forecast and take your best guess. I did have some reasons why I thought 16.5 would be the low and we were right. So back here in December of 2022, uh, we were saying now's the time to buy. I released uh, the Blood in the Streets report um, by the way, if you guys would like to see that, don't look at all this just yet. You can go to our website. There's got a lot of free stuff here, moonstream.io down at the bottom. And uh, let's see, Myrene, we're missing an image here, it looks like, on the checklist, because I know we just updated that. But uh, if you could tweak that there, but uh, you can sign up for our weekly newsletter. You can get this report. The past and future for Bitcoin, I renamed it. Uh, it used to be called Blood in the Streets, and we released that a year ago. And uh, people thought we were crazy, um, but then we went up 100% on the uh, the Bitcoin there. So you can click on that and uh, get that free report if you'd like. All right. So, um, and some other stuff free. Where were we? We were still in the news. SEC, we're done with Richard Hart. We've got some news here. Google loosen restrictions on crypto ads. Okay, that's good. I saw this, you know, for advertisers like us uh, who would like to advertise on Google, they don't allow this. That's why you probably, many people haven't heard of us. We haven't been able to run crypto ads. Facebook doesn't like it. Google doesn't like it. Don't ask me why, but I think they'll loosen this. Now, this was on crypto trusts, so we still can't do it, unfortunately. Uh, if any of you uh, own Google by any chance, so would you let us know? Because uh, we'd like to run ads on your network. <laughs> you know, Sergey, if you're here, a Bitcoin correction to, to 39K. So I, this is what I was saying. So, all right, look, I'm in good company. Willie Wu says that. I think 38K. I think it's uh, he's being conservative. But, um, you know, down this region would be a good thing. Put a long post out on Facebook uh, yesterday that I'm getting a lot of uh, good feedback on. Basically, uh, maybe we'll just skim that. I think that would be helpful. Saying that Bitcoin cycles, crypto cycles are important. They're necessary. While everyone else is panicking, you need to realize that if you don't have the bulls and bears, both have, both have to win. They both have to have their turn. Otherwise, it's like having a tug of war by yourself, right? So uh, you need both parties uh, or else there's no point. So this is a bit of a long read here. Um, I don't know if there's a way to get it to you other than uh, I, I could make this public, I suppose. But um, yeah, here's some uh, from somebody saying they could have charged for this post. It was so good. And basically all it's saying, though, is like you got to be aware of the fact that uh, pullbacks are normal and you can't have one without the other. Let me just see here real quick. How many of you guys would you guys like this? I have a link to it. I don't know if it's public or private, though. I'm not a... Um, see edit the audience okay some people say Susie, tony yeah. all right so i think i can make this public look at that now there we go like i said i figured it out even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while there's the link for that you guys it should be public um click on that let me know if that works will you thank you that'd be worth reading for you guys so uh oh yeah this is also i forgot so jamie diamond uh such a hypocrite he's um you know from jp morgan again in the news saying they doesn't like bitcoin doesn't like crypto sounds like old man you know, that grumpy old grandpa warren buffett who said uh bitcoin's rat poison you know understand they have vested interests not to support this they're in banking all the things and industries that will suffer from bitcoin being adopted are uh, against their vested interests and their shareholders. They can't come out and say, we love Bitcoin. So just be, you know, and similarly, JP Morgan, though, they, here the ad, the, the news even says this. He's out there bashing crypto, okay? Uh, at the same time, they are expanding and building out their blockchain desk. <clears throat> so he did that last time. They used to say, I have Bitcoin noted, but they were buying, they were buying a lot of it. So uh, yeah, it's, but uh, let's see, Marcus go. Yeah, this is worth reading. We can find it. Mark Yusko is great. He's uh, Pompliano's uh, partner there. So anything they put out is good uh, Good stuff over at Morgan Creek. Uh, Tether, um, wallet freezing, not going to get into that. Um, Ethereum Rivals. This is, you know, a lot of this is click bank, uh, click bait rather, which is like just wants to get the click from us. So dramatic headline that has very little news value. 
Uh, Jamie Diamond. Yeah, this is good. Uh, who said this? Yeah, Mike Novogratz, another good one. He says, Jamie Diamond is wrong about Bitcoin. Bitcoin has outperformed JP Morgan stock in over 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no regrets is great. We were we were in conversations with Mike uh, to speak at the Crypto Summit. Uh, maybe we can get him on for the relaunch here, hopefully next month. Uh, look at this, Brock Pierce. So I was just down in Miami for the Art Basel show, and uh, I just missed Brock. Um, a good friend of a mutual friend of ours said, "Hey, Brock was here, but uh, he was in and out." Um, if you guys are familiar with Brock Pierce, early Bitcoin adopter, um, a great interview I saw yesterday with Brock. And let me see if that I'm I'm going to give you that link if you guys haven't seen it. I posted it in the M3 Active Trader group yesterday. How many of you saw that interview with Brock Pierce? Let me see. I'm going to grab it. I'm on my other screen. Let's see. Not that we're sharing a lot of information, by the way. I guess it's a good small. It's not a commercial for my M3 Active Trader. Look, I want to help as many of you as I can. This is a private chat group as part of our active trader where I'm showing these charts where I saw there was resistance at 44 or 5 on Bitcoin. There was no surprise it pulled back there. Uh, I did a video update yesterday on the markets. Uh, we're going to cover some of that today, uh, cover the liquidations. So if you like what you're seeing here and you'd like access to it earlier, um, you know, you can go over to moonstream.io slash M3. I am doing a free training like this Thursday night. And you can, I'll show you a link where you can sign up for that. And we're going to talk about M3. Um, you, you know, you'll get value out of that presentation either way. So please show up uh, if you'd like to see that. I am looking for the Brock Pierce. And here's, uh, here's someone saying my Crypto Damas name. Uh, a Crypto Damas hat? I see. That's funny. Guys, I'm just trying to give you that Brock Pierce interview. If somebody, if anyone's here from M3 and you have that, can you... Um, Drop it in the chat because I don't want to spend too much time on that. I did. I thought it was a great interview, though. Um, and he talks. Uh, he's running for. I don't know about president, but he is. He's always been very involved in in a proponent of. Wait, is this it? Okay, I found it. Never mind. Uh, of Bitcoin, I have been to his house twice here in Washington D.C. Amazing house, but uh, he has uh, alluded. Uh, our meeting okay here is uh okay david thank you uh it's in the chat everybody um myrene if you can post it also in the, sh the notes for anyone watching on youtube by the way if you are watching youtube uh, please like subscribe to the channel if you like what we're sharing here today and uh, i think at some point we're going to start doing these live and just stream them on youtube got to get all my tech figured out here so all right so i think that's about it the binance news is kind of settled out i will just say though um, be aware that the other shoe is always out there and we don't know how many legs the SEC has. They might have lots of shoes. Binance, um, you know, CC is paying his $4 billion fine. Uh, he can afford it. The only other threats I see out there is if something went haywire with Tether. But every cycle, there's all this FUD about Tether and it's always fine. So I, I just I think the um, I think the. I want to say I think everything's behind us. I just, those of you who know me, my spidey sense is pretty good. I feel like there's one more thing that's that's going to scare everybody. They're going to pull the markets down. It, it, the bottom is in. We're not going below 16.5. If we did have a major news event and if, uh, if something really got scary, 20K would be the bottom. That's another CME gap. I don't think uh, I don't think that's going to happen on my rational mind, but there's something in the wings potentially, and I just you know, be careful. But as long as you're ready to hold for the year, we'll be okay. Uh, big traders still waiting on the sidelines. People saying it's crypto launch's most hated rally. That's interesting. I haven't heard this person's name, and some from Coin Shares. Okay, so he said uh, blue chip traders are on the sidelines. It is true. This is a retail driven rally. This is uh, not the big institutions. They are still sitting on the sidelines. So uh, expect some volatility and uh, any news event. You know probably see people panic selling nobody wants to see the bear back just yet how are we doing on time about 12 30 so we'll wrap up the news here and uh we can't read all of it um if we were an ai we could just absorb it all into our brain through osmosis that would be awesome but then there would be no need for uh we'd all be <laughs> we would be stagnant there'd be stagnation because we'd all have all the same information at the same time so let's see a lot of different factors, buyers are pricing in, big traders, macro desks haven't started buying yet. Is this a good thing? It is a good thing if that's what we're waiting for. And that is what we are waiting for, if you don't know that. 
because to get in front of the big money is what's going to really push this thing higher. And uh, we will talk about my nine factors that can push this push Bitcoin to 150K, even 210K fairly quickly. I was discussing a 10th factor over the weekend, so we might have 10. I just, um, we'll get to that. Uh, and, and that's an interesting analogy you'll want to know about. But so essentially, uh, there'll be a race to get in, like musical chairs and a flight to quality, as um, uh, Larry Fink said of BlackRock. So let's see, factors, buyers are pricing in, the, the big traders, the macro desks, Obviously, what that means, haven't started buying yet. Still a lot of institutional investors waiting. And for me, the big leading indicators when retail is back. And that's when the dog, yeah, the dog coins start running. Um, exactly. So uh, let's see. Why is he still talking about 2022? Um, most hated rally. Why? We're going to the end of the year. Everyone's tired about hearing about crypto, but we're so back. Exactly. So this is kind of where... You know, we're in that disbelief phase of the, let me pull that up here if you guys don't remember that. And also sort of the apathy phase, right? People are like, kind of enough about Bitcoin. I've just, I've heard it already. Yeah, so here is the chart. So typically the market cycle, the psychology of a market cycle where people are buying at the top. Your, your neighbor Mary's saying, I heard from Bob down the street that he's made all this money in this thing called Bitcoin. How do I buy some? And they say, make a little money. I'm a genius. We're all going to be rich. Okay. And then complacency. That's such a dangerous place to be. And everyone back here thought we were going to 100,000. The market top was in. We had the pullback. Everyone thought, hey, it's fine. It's just buy the dip. And we pushed up that bear market rally, actually put in a new high. I have another graphic here, which has the overlay, which uh, I'll uh, pull up here as well. And uh, And then, of course, the bottom dropped out. So, right, let's see, we don't want to do all of that here, but here's, this is my, I don't know why it's opening it in this format. Let me do that again. Uh, that way you don't need to see all that other stuff. And I've crashed my computer. Okay, no, just this file, whatever that thing, it's, it's called Snagit, you guys. Um, I don't know what's going on here, maybe uh, out of memory on that. Let's see, are we back? We're back. Let me see if I can open that one up in another editor and open with photos. That's what I want to do. There we go. Second time's a charm. So this is an overlay of the actual Bitcoin price on this market psychology sheet. It's a little bit outdated, but you see how it, it mirrored it almost exactly. Okay, so... This being the top, if you're familiar with Wyckoff patterns, uh, that was the upthrust after distribution. You can learn more about that in my uh, future of Bitcoin report that I just talked about. Uh, but that complacency. So I want to be, want you all to be careful when you're feeling complacent and everything's okay. Uh, be a little careful. Have your emergency stop losses in place. And I will show you in a moment some of the indicators that we've created that give us uh, have, have told us exactly where tops and reversal points are okay so anyway we're down here i think we're down in this area of disbelief saying this is a sucker's rally we've gone through that depression phase you know and uh we we are ready to move on so anyway enough about that um the we'd lost a, a fair amount of market uh total market cap we'll look at this here and yeah, the most hated rally. I don't know why they're saying that. So that's enough about the news. Shall we dive into everything else? By the way, um, I have going to be sharing our trader success checklist. And so this is something you can get free if you go over to where is it? Uh, there's a link on our website at moonstream.io at the bottom. I think it's the link is this success checklist. So uh, again, the, the image is missing. So Myrene is fixing that, but um, it uh, is here and you can click on that and you can give us your name. We'll, we'll send this right away to you. So what this is, we have a new version coming out. I don't know. Do we have the new version up, Myrene? We, maybe we do. Uh, and it's essentially, you can download that. And what it does is it helps give you a score for when a trade is in your favor, when it's safe to get in. Look, I know a lot of people have their own indicators. 
uh, to be clear, um, we uh, these are the best I've used in 20 years. Uh, you can learn more about CryptoMastery.org. Uh, these uh, one of them was an accidental discovery that I found and discovered. We work with a quant engineer and also a 20 plus year trader. Uh, every day he's trading. He's one of the smartest guys I know. Also a mad scientist created these suite of indicators. We have some new ones we're about to talk about too. They're, they're phenomenal. But this these alone have made the biggest difference. And if you see these circled arrows here, when these two align, this was the market top. We had red arrows at the top. We had green arrows at the bottom. We had red arrows at the top. This went all the way down here and green arrows at the bottom. Same thing here. Uh, this indicator bundle here alone is amazing. So you can learn more about that here. But the um, only reason I'm showing you that is that's what these are based on. So when we have an ERI, if it's up, we'll check one box, TSI, signal, the more of these are checked, you get a trade score that uh, gives you that confidence to get into the trades. So I'm not here to sell you anything, everybody. I'm here to give you the tools and the education that you can use to win in this bull market, uh, plain and simple. So um, you, you can learn about all this stuff at moonstream.io and uh, or the, the indicators cryptomastery.org. We'll link to that if you're watching on YouTube down below. Okay, uh, let's move on. So let's get into the charts. Bitcoin talked about that. What do we see? Let me pull up my indicators. Now, what is on top of this chart? By the way, uh, this is a daily chart. If we go to weekly and then I'll turn those off. The targets I have for this Bitcoin bull run I'm um, based on the last cycle. Let's start with the last cycle so you guys understand why we're doing those. And to do that, I'm going to turn off these FIB targets. Is that the right one? There it is. I'll put that back in a moment. The last market cycle, we had uh, we hit the exact 3.618 retracement on that. So from the cycle high, I'll turn my camera off in a moment so you guys can see it all. From the prior cycle high to the low, extended out that was exactly where the the high was okay 3.618 and so it's fair to assume doesn't mean it has to happen but it's fair to assume that that also could be hit uh, in the next cycle all right so we are going to look at all the options that would put us at right around 210,000 which you'll see in a moment where did uh, my Fibonacci's uh, go? It's, it's disappeared now. Um, and I'll and I'll talk about the pie cycle top and bottom a little bit. We talk much more about this in tomorrow's class, which is our M3 Active Trader class. But uh, here, so this is where we have set targets. So if we go from the last cycle high to the bottom and, and put on our Fibonacci's here, just for clarity, let me turn off the one that, uh, that we, why does it keep closing this here? There, that's what I wanted. So basically from this cycle top to the bottom, a 3.618 projection goes up to this 210,000. The 2.618 projection goes to 155,000. And the 1.618 gives us our $100,000 Bitcoin, which we were counting on last cycle. I think uh, I have another chart here that shows that's likely. I do think we hit 100K Bitcoin, no problem this cycle. I think 155K Bitcoin is probable i think two hundred and ten thousand dollar bitcoin is possible and uh into uh 2024 maybe it takes a little longer but i think we get there faster in the short term uh pull back here just as we said i think we go up to 48k 50k golden pocket that's fibonacci uh psych or wedge little little sliver where price usually goes and retraces to so that's the uh, tldr on that i'll turn these off and uh we'll just take a look at the uh, what else on our indicators, right? So what are we seeing on my, I'll turn on the ERI, the early reversal uh, indicator here. Now we've added order flow. So these green blocks show up when there's lots of buying and lots of strength. So we had order blocks here and here. We were getting into the markets back in this range and uh, we had this nice order block come in. But for now, um, I think it's it's a little bit overbought here. And so our trend strength indicator is rolling over. I, this is another reason why I think we'll see a multi-week, a week or two pullback and hopefully give us a nice bounce off of these. And uh, sometimes I'll even draw trend lines in here. So maybe it's a week or two and then we push higher again. So that's what I'll be uh, waiting for there. And then uh, our other indicators, the signal, these are different algorithms. Essentially when they all line up, ERI, TSI, Signal, and Bell, it's good to go. And uh, we also use one called the Average True Range. It gets a little messy if we put all of them 
on there. So we'll turn those off for now. Uh, let's do this. I'll uh, pull up the Pi Cycle top here, and that's another. That's an indicator. That's a free indicator you can find on, online, but uh, we're nowhere near that yet. The Pi Cycle top uh, is worth knowing and noting as far as a market top, which it did nail back here. It's pretty good at calling the market tops. I was telling investors to get out on the second bounce here uh, for other reasons, and our indicators told us the same. So, you know, somewhere up in here, I do have a study where I project where I think the next market top will be. And I do think it's around 210K uh, based on the Pi Cycle top projections. Actually, I think it's around one. Let me pull that up so I don't mislead you guys in, unintentionally, of course. Uh, the So I have another chart where I've sort of put it up. I think probably it's 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 when we get up in that range, it's hard to tell 150K to 210K. I think uh, is is uh, likely. Let's see if I have that chart here. Uh, I will turn on the comments again. And where did they, uh, let me see if I can find those. Uh, this I have to open back up. Okay, got a bunch of questions here, guys. Let me pause and just scan back through that and see if you guys, if I can answer any questions. Um, love it here, lots of questions here. Um, okay, let's uh, just take a pause on that. Let's see. Um, uh, David says, M but Susie says M3 is the best. Thanks, guys. Perry says uh, Jamie Diamond's a bankster. <laughs> That's a good one. Gangster, bankster. They're all buying and building cryptos. Yeah, exactly. Uh, follow the money. JP Morgan's nothing but a history of corruption since the veil man himself. Uh, evil man. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I mean, people agree. Uh, more comments about M3. You can read yourself on the signal chat. Yeah. Yeah. We have um, in the M3 Active Trader, like I, I'll talk a little bit about it in the, in the end. You know, we have a little bit more advanced class than this one on Wednesdays. You get a cool hat. You get a signal chat. Uh, you can ask questions uh, pretty much 24-7. Uh, I'm uh, always on there, even on my phone when I'm on vacation, updating you guys and uh, giving trade recommendations uh, as well as um, some other stuff that uh, I'll give you a link for. Uh, and uh, to look at on your time, Perry says, does it matter how high the previous all-time high was for a coin as far as the investment potential right now? That's a great question. Um, that is a, it's one of the things I look at as a barometer. And we look a lot of that in the M3 class, but I'll, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like a, a pitch here let's look at that today i do use the prior cycle high of a coin as a barometer doesn't matter if it gets there or not but as a barometer compared to other coins so it's a very good question i'm glad you asked if one coin let's say chain link or ethereum has a 5x potential then uh but you have another one like solana that has a 10 or 20 or 40x potential where is the better risk reward ratio and we've identified some that have 40x, 50x. There's one I think has has an outside chance of 350x. Um, but but I'm I'm all I'm looking at, and in the ideal portfolio, we have the ones that have the highest potential to back to old highs. And that's uh it's an excellent way to look at it. And so Perry says, are those with 10x to get back to all-time high better to buy compared exactly? Well. When you say better, that's the trade-off. This is both an art and a science. If one is a stronger coin that's been around for three market cycles, if it's tier one, if it's venture-backed, do they have a use case? There's a lot of things to keep in mind as far as better. Uh, is there a higher risk-reward ratio uh, if they get to an old high and the project is solid? So you have to decide and do your research, is the project solid? Now, you can do things like checking on GitHub. I think there was a comment about that. Are they actively building in the bear market? Do they, who are the investors? Like uh, Helium Coin had an 11, 111 investment from Andries and Horowitz. Great uh, project. Solana is backed by some top uh, venture backed companies and so, or uh, private equity and venture backed companies. So these are all things to keep in mind. Uh, and so, um, but that's, yeah, we'll take a look at that a bit. Uh, David already answered that. All right. So, uh, so you can read the comments there. Uh, good comments. We've already talked about that. Yep. And you guys have talked, or you guys are chatting today. Good. Uh, would be altcoins all trying to do the same thing. ATS. Yeah. So these are some of the ones uh, David's sharing. Um, 
David sharing all of our secrets here. Hmm. Those are some good options. All right. ATH centralized question I'm using past ATH. All right, you guys, let me see. Uh okay. Yeah, David, maybe don't tell everyone that. That's uh usually reserved for our paying members there. But um anyway, you got a freebie, you guys. Devs updating. All right, you guys are already chatting about a lot of this. So let me get down to the bottom. Does calendar year change institutions doing force prices down? Um, so Perry asking, wouldn't institutions do anything they can do to force prices down? I mean, certainly we we will never know. Um, and they are may try to do that. Look, there's an outside chance. BlackRock says and uses their influence with the SEC to say, hey, don't approve us uh, yet. So we, we need to we, we want to cross our T's and dot our I's a bit more if. And that could be a shoe to drop if they don't approve any ETFs the first week in January. Uh, we're going to see a dump. People are going to panic and people are going to sell and say, oh, my God, this isn't going to happen. If that happens, I'd be buying at key support levels and just knowing that it's it's coming. It's a matter of when. But uh, and that would be, you know, the the genius idea for them for BlackRock, but I think they would have, they would lose a lot of goodwill. I think the money really wants to get in to this market. So I don't really think that's happening. And uh, all right. So I'm caught up on the chat. Yeah, there we go. All right, guys, well, let's get back into this and uh, a couple other things here. Let me just see if there's any news we missed on this. If you don't have your, um, your news turned on on your charts on trading view make sure to do that let's see helium coin we have some news definitely want to check out that solana for sure these are some of my favorites let me unpack bitcoin real quick uh let's see I'm, I'm on solana okay that's why that came up let's go down the road a little bit uh down the list um and uh, of course here's our friend wayne gretzky where does wayne gretzky skate to he goes where the pocket's going to be that's why he was the greatest hockey player of all time. Well, that's what we try to do. We try to say, all right, where's Wayne going to be? He's skating down on the ice here. He's waiting for the puck. He's waiting for Bitcoin to come back down and retest this 38,000 support level. And we know that from going back here all the way back. It was a key pivot level where we had resistance flipped as some support and resistance, support, support, broke down, resisted, came back up, you know, likely comes back down to this you know 36 37 38k level and then would push higher as well from that point that's what i think uh and um have some order blocks some different charts here on bitcoin trying to get a different read not worried about the pullback uh theory and bearish engulfing candle but really what is it doing it has come down and done the same thing let me get rid of some of these lines here on the weekly time frame it's coming down this is my zigzag of what I thought price would do on the daily time frame. But uh, at any rate, the support resistance level, well, where is, come on now, where is Ethereum? It has come right back to retest this resistance point. It's exactly what you want to see it do. So, you know what I think we need to we should grab Wayne's, Wayne Gretzky here. Put him right there on the ice because that's what he's waiting for. Ethereum to me looks pretty good. However, whenever it's this far above the 21 week moving average, usually it'll go sideways or it'll come back down and test these. So if we come back, where else will we be looking to buy Ethereum? Well, that $2,000 number is a great point. And I love when it comes up above the 21 and 50 EMAs. The crossovers of the 21 and 50 EMA also a huge strength point. A lot of the altcoins have this setting up. And uh, and that's why they're looking good. Here we see our early reversal indicator, this green arrow, also a bullish engulfing candle. And when we see it coincide with this trend strength indicator going green, then the signal line and then the bell. The bell is our trend indicator. When these four align, things go up. It's funny how that works, but uh, we've got a lot of advanced stuff in there. So these are great indicators. Uh, this circle was previously drawn on the 2150 crossover on the daily basis. So we were buying ETH down in here, got the green box. Uh, we have a bearish ERI. So I think another signal we're coming down when we have a bearish early reversal indicator. That's this red arrow. Um, this is the oscillator version, which I can tell you what it means if you really want to know. We created arrows out of it just to make it easy for people. This was an accidental discovery that we were about to dis, uh, um, disregard and get rid of what's the right, deprecate this uh, oscillator. And then I said to Joe, our programming genius, I said, hey, wait a minute, Joe, when this does this and this and that within three time periods, it's like 95%. So uh, hence the name early reversal indicator, this 
There's a Keltner band built in here. There's a pattern that we've identified. All that matters is when we get this red arrow and we also see the trend indicator, the trend strength indicator come down from the blue zone and break below 80, break below the blue zone. So again, we're, we're going to have a couple more days of downside in, uh, on uh, these markets here, but not the end of the world. Our signal line also crossing into red. We will wait for our another ideal entry point. And uh, so these classes primarily are really to train on the indicators. So I'll go a little bit deeper into this. On the trend indicator, what do we have? We have our midline turning red. That means there's no trend. It doesn't mean we're going down. It just means there's no trend. And we wait for the next key in the bell. The bell is the buy signal. Uh, somewhere we have a little graphic of Mario from Mario Brothers because it kind of feels like you're running along grabbing the coins. Uh, but this, uh, you know, make no mistake, while we've made these simple, there's a lot of advanced uh, algorithms in the background. And um, that's why we've created these, especially to work together. The more that line up, the more powerful the signal. And uh, that's why we created that uh, trade check uh, checklist. So if we just do a little bit of a, uh, and on a weekly basis too, it's been excellent. So uh, if we wanted to do a kind of a walk down memory lane, when's the last time we saw a uh, a weekly bearish engulfing well we got it here at the top on this bitcoin it was uh on it was triggering right at the top by the way this is the power of these indicators you guys just as a reminder we will be i think we're going to nail the next market top i'm highly confident of that uh, we had our eri trigger right there and then we had buy signals here and here and then also bearish there when they aligned here but this red arrow Trend indicator going green to red. Signal went red. Trend indicator went red. That was the market top. We nailed it. Okay. And then it reiterated here. Same kind of a setup. And similarly, uh, market bottoms. Excellent at catching these. The COVID crash. Got the green arrow. Got the TSI going red to green out of the oversold zone. And then signal went green here right at the bottom. And perfect setup here for that market bottom. Got the bell. So what we are watching for... Here, if I just turn off all of these other signals here, what we are looking for, we want a pullback. We want a pullback down in this region, ideally something like this, where the 21 and 50 EMAs are close and tight together. If we turn on our EMA ribbon, you could see that, but we want to see a pullback here and bounce higher. It's not rocket science here. So that's why Wayne Gretzky hanging out down there on the ice, because really what we're looking at, you've heard me say this analogy, the, e the 50 and 21 day EMAs are like ice. Uh, you want to be above the ice. You don't want to be standing on thin ice. This is thick ice here on two layers, so it's safe to go out on your skates. Uh, you'd think I'd be a big hockey guy. I don't know where we came up with this. I've never played hockey in my life. Uh, so anyway, do you get the point? Everyone get it? Questions here. I heard a trader say that it's like ripples in the crypto pool right now after this drop waiting to settle out. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's exactly right. It's... Uh, the players are kind of circling and looking where the puck is going to be. And, um, you know, it's also why when over the weekend we started dumping Sunday and everyone said, what, what do we do Monday? I said, let's let Monday settle out. Uh, people are digesting everything. And uh, so it's digesting well. We were up earlier today. We're down about 500 on Bitcoin. Um, you know, let's go to the four hour one hour, four hours. So we're coming back down a bit. Again, I, I'd like to see come back down to 38K. Here's the order block indicators here showing where the order blocks are. Here's our early reversal indicator, which uh, works on all time frames. It was nailed it perfectly right here on the four hour on Saturday. So uh, we had that trigger and we had our trend strength indicator also go red. So those of you that are trading shorter time frames, um, you know, would have known there's a sell order block here. We had the ERI. So this would have been a good time to get out. There's some order um, orders in here in the four hours here at 40K. So we could see this hold, but if it doesn't, we've got more order flow down at 39K and at 38, 300. All right. So good example to bring on and look at our other favorite indicator, the average true range. So if I just open this up for everybody, and these are, of course, all included in the crypto mastery indicators, and you get the indicators included in the M3 trader class. So uh, by the way, um, let me give you the link where you guys can sign up to join us for that class 
this Thursday night. Are you guys, I, this market is evolving quickly. So I believe it's at moonstream.io slash free training, but I want to just double check that on my other screen before I share that with you. Um, yeah, so I'll drop that in the chat, but if you go over here to, uh, let's see there. So moonstream.io slash free training, it'll redirect you. So this is a brand new class, you guys. This is not a long, boring PowerPoint presentation. Um, you know, we're going to do some live trading like we're doing now. And I'm going to share some uh, new nuances with you. So sign up for that and uh, join us. And uh, I'm also going to tell you about this M3 Active Trader class that we do. Uh, it's the best in the uh, in the world, I think. Um, not to sound self-serving, but I just don't see anyone teaching anything like this out there. And uh, we've had rave reviews from our students that uh, joined last year. Many of you are here today. So uh, feel free to join uh, this Thursday. That's at moonstream.io slash free training. And I'm going to drop a couple other coin gems that I've been watching. All right. So with that, um, please join us for, for that class. How are we doing on time? We're right at the other edge of the hour, top of the hour. I do want to talk about some other things here um, on the Bitcoin larger time frame. I did say we'd look at some of these other coins, however. So uh, let's do that. And um, by the way, um, on our class tomorrow, we talk about longer time frames and... Uh, I will come back to the hot movers here for today. Uh, but Wayne Gretz, he's all over the charts here today. How'd that happen? Um, we have some other charts where we look at the monthly, and um, we'll we'll dive into that more in detail tomorrow. You guys know that, so that's how we nailed the top also and the bottom here in January. So uh, we'll be uh, diving into that a little bit deeper. Here's what I wanted to show you, because a lot of you are, yeah, here's some new names and new faces here today. So um, I, I'm going to, I think I'm probably covering some of this chart though, right? Let me kill my camera for a minute. All right, what are we looking at here? This is a chart where we have those two Fibonacci projections, like I showed you from the 2017 high to the bottom. The projected retracement was the 3.618. Um, excuse me. Yeah, um, we're not seeing your screen. Oh, that's right. There, yep, you're back. Got Thank it. You. Thank you. New technology, everyone. Uh, what I'll do, I can. I have to do it on a totally different screen here in my OBS. Ah, there we go. How about that? I think that's it. So um, thank you. Uh, all right. So this is two things here. The Fibonacci projection from the market cycle high to the low pushes up, nailed the market top. So forecasted that if we draw the same one from the top to the bottom here, puts it up here as a possible if if it happens the same, but this rally should be stronger. So guys, we could go higher than this. And I will talk a bit about my nine factors. I have to pull up another chart, but I think it's worth hearing. Uh, I'll have to do it quickly. We, we're going to dissect it more tomorrow. But here, there's two reasons, though. There's two overlapping targets on this being the top, and uh, that's around 210,000. So what the other version is, if I hide the Fibonacci retracements. Let me do that real quick because it's probably a little bit hard to look at otherwise. Um, what else do we have here? We have a macro bull flag and a bull flag. This line's not important, but essentially a bull flag is if it pushes higher, this is the flagpole. And then this is the flag. If it breaks out of the flag, the measured move of the target is usually the same or roughly the same as the length of the flagpole. So these two are the same lines drawn over here like this. Where does that put it? It puts us exactly, exactly at 210,000, which is my 3.618 projection. Guys, if I'm right, you guys all owe me a set of steak knives uh, or a, uh, I don't know, <laughs> some frozen steaks. I'm just kidding. But uh, that would be uh, very interesting if that plays out. And if it does, uh, by the way, ignore this random candle here. This is a screenshot. Uh, this was designed to be sort of a copy of, of one of these. Why did we do that? I think we will talk about it more tomorrow. Because on a monthly time frame, we could see an, a big push uh, higher here on that. But uh, I'm going to leave it off to the side because I forget why we put that there. And um, what I may not have time for, let's see. I'm, I've promised you guys a whole bunch of things. Uh, the, um, yeah, hang on. Let me come back to that. 
Uh, while I'm pulling this up, by the way, just as a reminder, the trader success checklists, you can get all of these at uh, and link to them at our moonstream.io site. The trade success checklist there. We're about to put up a new one. Um, the indicators, um, if you just want the indicators, get these. Trust me, your trading will improve. We do these classes every Tuesday where I show you how to use the indicators. If you are a Crypto Mastery uh, user and you have any questions on them, uh, let me know. Usually I found showing them in real market conditions works best, but uh, I, I am here for you and uh, to answer those questions. But um, you can see how good these have been. They've nailed a lot of these trades we've uh, uh, been doing in the Moonstream community, like Phantom Coin, Solana up 657%. Uh, helium about 311 percent so there's more information at cryptomastery.org the next level training we do is a moonstream m3 crypto and um that is where we talk about uh, what we're doing here today and i also you get the indicators included so it's kind of a good way to do that and you can read more about that uh, a little bit if you want to read about my background i don't need to talk about it here today and um yeah, so that would be where you can learn more about this. I have another screen up to pull up that other stuff I was going to share with you. But, oh, you also get some cool bonuses, high probability trade checklists, candlestick patterns. You get my DCA investing worksheet. This is a lot of what I work with clients to do one-on-one -on -one in our coaching. If any of you are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, I might have time or spot for one or two more, although... Uh, we'll have to see how this week goes, but uh, these are some interactive tools on in Google Docs, as well as a portfolio tracker where you can track your P and L. And really, I advise doing that to kind of know when when um, how your positions are doing, when to take profits, when to sell losses, trading patterns, things like that. So uh, anyway, um, uh, here's a new video from uh, the Bitcoin conference, by the way, with the hat. Uh, my friend uh, has a hat company, so uh, she makes our hats for us. So you get a cool hat when you sign up. So you can learn more about that. Uh, but but it, uh, you can also uh, join us Thursday night and learn more about how to get involved. Lots of uh, feedback here you can read on your own time. Uh, we are here to, to help you guys, not here to sell things. But these are all tools that we've developed to help students just like you to succeed in crypto. So with that, um, is this the right page that I wanted to show you guys? I hope so. And, ah, okay. So this only has seven factors. This is my trading view version. And so far it's dead on, but that is not the version I want to share with you. So stay with us. I just have to scroll down through my, uh, one tab, which is where I save all of these things. And, um, well, where is that then? Hold on a second. I thought I had. Oh, I know where it is. It's in the M3 Active Trader stuff because that's where we usually look at it. Okay. Uh, so while I'm doing that, I'll pull up these crypto hot movers. You guys can look at this. And so Bitcoin accumulation zones, mastery, uh, Bitcoin standard, DXY, uh, path to 100K. I believe that's it, but I want to get the right one. We've got a ton of charts here and there's a cool... Here's a neat tool for you guys that are online a lot. It's called One Tab. So what I'm doing is I'm scrolling through all these past charts to see the one that I wanted to share with you. And I think it's right in here. We've got so many of them. I'm giving you something extra today for being here because I'm happy all you guys showed up. And uh, But uh, where is that? Oh, we've got the rocket indicator um that I, we just released we just released a new indicator you guys it's called the rocket so i tell you what while i'm looking for this other stuff uh, i want to share those nine reasons with you but uh we have a new indicator here that'll show you uh our favorite setup for when we're about to rocket higher see these little rockets on there uh that's pretty cool and here i did find it so all right never give up all right this is what i wanted to share with you guys all right, so th this is similar to what I've already talked about here, the two Fib projections. Um, what I want to do is um, show you the chart pattern that could push this higher much faster. So scenario one, this is the exact same chart pattern as back in here, just condensed down a bit. Okay, so this, you can see it's that same pattern extended out a bit. Okay, so 
where I think we could go is on that pattern, push up, break to new highs. But I really think we push up to 100K, pull back to retest the old high around 70K, and then we push up to 155K. And uh, if we were to lay out the timing on that, it puts us around May, June, July, possibly. Maybe sooner. I'm just wondering if... So here's here's the... Normally, we talk about this in our class tomorrow. I'll give you guys a little bit of alpha here. And uh, tomorrow, I'll have that 10th version for you guys. But essentially, think of these as small campfires and uh, like a good California blaze. All it takes is for a number of these smaller fires to get together into one, and then it's an inferno. So the first one here, BlackRock and Fidelity ETF approval. We talked a little bit about that. And uh, let's see. I guess what I can do is come on again for a second. We've talked a bit about that. And... Um, that's probably the biggest one, but it could fizzle out. The other one is QE money printing to pay down the U.S. debt. If you go to usdebtclock.org, you'll have nightmares for a week. It is a real-time debt counter of how much money we are spending as a country, how big the deficit is. Uh, the reality is we can't really afford this debt. They're going to have to start dropping interest rates. Uh, I just got a message today that Powell said they'll start dropping rates probably in the summer. Now, keep in mind, generally, when we start dropping rates, we see a market crash. So I think this pushes higher into the summer. We maybe have six months on this. And um, and uh, then we start seeing things some things breaking. We've got to get that interest rate down to be able to afford the U.S. debt because we can't afford our own debt at these high interest rates. The other problem is the bank failures in the COVID crash. All the banks were sold to these uh, low interest rate uh, bonds. And the government said, we're not going to raise interest rates. And then so all these companies bought all these bonds and they were lending them out at low interest rates. Well, now the government has raised the interest rates and screwed a lot of these banks, if not all of these banks. And a lot of them are holding uh, huge negative balances on their books. Uh, banks are failing. Citizens Bank, a regional one, not the big one, but a regional bank recently went under. So we could see bank runs. We could see more flight to quality money going into Bitcoin. We're starting to see that. Uh, but last month we had, I think it was 700,000 or 800,000 new Bitcoin wallets in a single day. Uh, the biggest in any any day in history. Hyperinflation, de-dollarization, the BRICS nations, you know, this you haven't heard a lot about. It's still smoldering. These are smoldering campfires that could all blaze together at any point. They are getting away from the dollar. So uh, these other countries, so Brazil, Russia, um, uh, India, C is China and S, I forget which one S is. <laughs> so, but all those, there's more of them. Getting away from the dollar, Less interest in dollar, less demand for dollar equals more supply equals hyperinflation as we de-dollarize. If you haven't seen Ray Dalio's special on Netflix, uh, Changing World Order, he talks about this. It's from a year ago. He said, it's too late, you guys. China is already, the one is already sort of trending up. I don't believe it's too late, but we have to be careful. Uh, you know, originally the world currency was the uh, Dutch Gilder and they lost it to the English. It was the British pound for a long, long time. And in each case, when these countries lost, when their currency was lost as a reserve world currency, they sort of, they, they lost their world dominance. So something we have to keep in mind. Uh, but these are all things that would uh, contribute to more Bitcoin as well as corporate accumulation, micro strategy, Michael Saylor recently buying $600 billion more, planning to slow, uh, float <laughs> to float $750 million common stock offering to buy more. He's publicly stated that's the, his company's, that's their business plan. It's a very profitable business. They use it to pay their debt service on the money they borrowed to buy Bitcoin at very low interest rates. And then you're going to use the rest to buy more Bitcoin. That'll drive it higher. And I think there will be similar following uh, bigger companies following suit. Apple, Tesla, because why? Nobody wants to be left out. We'll see that this bull run. Also, country accumulation as a reserve currency. El Salvador is up. They're profitable on their Bitcoin now. And uh, it's only a matter of time before more adopted as uh, legal res uh, legal reserve currency. So that's happening. Post having here's a big one. So after the having, uh, so you guys have already heard this in uh, the active trader classes, but uh, this is something Sailor pointed out recently. Currently, the largest sell pressure or one of the largest sell pressures is from Bitcoin miners. They have to pay for their big, expensive ASIC rigs. The days of mining Bitcoin on 
your laptop are long gone. Uh, if you go to the Bitcoin show where I was, the Bitcoin miners are now walk in like a, a meat locker size fridge of just coolant and dozens of these things. The hash rate is, has gotten so hard that and so high that it takes a, a monumental amount of power and expense to mine a Bitcoin. They are selling about $12 billion a year of Bitcoin just to pay their costs and take some profits. Okay, so what will happen after April's having, there will be less Bitcoin available to mine. How much less? Half, therefore, there go calling it the having. Therefore, only six billion of Bitcoin available to sell or likely to be sold. Uh, I shouldn't say available, but there will be half as much to sell. Okay, so less, less uh, supply, higher demand. All right. So wrap your head around that. And so also less available supply, increasing demand shock. So what we've also seen is there's a, a, a lot less Bitcoin available. Uh, many people are hold, holding. the A lot of Bitcoin has been lost. A lot of it's been held and hasn't moved. So there's maybe, I think they're suggesting around 5 million Bitcoin, even on exchanges that's available. So as demand goes up and supply goes down, what we'll have is a supply shock, and uh, that'll also drive prices har higher. And uh, number nine, the political pressure in favor of Bitcoin and crypto. We're starting to see more and more of that. And uh, even in the U.S., when we've got uh, regulators and more pro-Bitcoin um, people in the running for office, presidents. I think we've got we've got two or three pro-Bitcoin presidential candidates. Uh, none of them really have a chance, but uh, this is... Um, uh, you never know. You never know. The people will demand to see more of this. I do applaud Cynthia Lomas, by the way. She's uh, out of, it's either Wyoming or Utah. I'm sorry, Wyoming or Montana. I can never remember. Pretty sure it's Wyoming. They are now using the methane gas from their oil refinery to burn, to power their Bitcoin mining rigs for a carbon neutral footprint on mining Bitcoin. And so, you know, that's going to, that's going to, I don't want to be derogatory to anybody with the climate change people. You know, you guys all have your own opinions, but, um, you know, that, that'll that shut them up and we can continue going on with, you know, what is uh, really Victor Hugo said, and nothing can stop an idea whose time has come and it's come the time for Bitcoin. The time has come for Bitcoin and crypto. All right, getting a little bit wordy here. Let's get back to some business and to make sure we have time to get to everything. That's uh, So I want to share that with you. We'll see how that plays out. This is published on TradingView. If you want to look up uh, my uh, channel there, it's not really a channel. It's just I publish various things on there and Twitter. Uh, so I'm starting to put things more out there for you guys. And uh, so anyway, quick look at the usually weekly. We look at the crypto market movers here in TradingView. Our filter is, do they have enough circulating supply and market cap credit coin i'm not familiar with we can take a quick look this is where we'll also go in and use our indicators to see because at the end of the day that's what i trust uh these indicators are uh, are the basis for everything we do uh this is likely a pump and dump is this uh it's on crypto.com um you know what what is it doing on the daily i'll pull up our indicators let me load my template just to see these are normally things i don't want to get into uh let's see that pulled up bitcoin so that's the problem with using the the mover it opens it without our indicators on it just from the chart though i would not be buying this uh, this is already pumped a lot if you put on a bollinger band you guys know that my favorite uh, Bollinger Band is a modified one, something that I discovered uh, a year and a half ago. Bollinger Band uh, standard settings don't work. The two standard deviations isn't enough for the volatility in, in uh, crypto, so we modify it. This is going to come back down, so let's not look at this one. Credit coin, uh, no go. That has been pumped. Mm, let's see nano i remember no that's a different nano we can take a look at nano here it's so the other thing i look at is the category cryptocurrencies and payments payments means they have a monetization model that means uh, they have a way to make money usually a good thing this looks more interesting this is a nicer chart so what do we have here we've got a nice base here a nice solid support coming up off of that i would uh this moving average, I don't know what that is. I like a 21 and 50. The problem here is that when, let me see if I can fix this problem. 
the pro pack volume 15 minute i want one that's not going to change the coin all right there we go we got it so these are the top crypto mastery indicators and uh the eri triggered back here on the weekly a um, bit overbought on the trend indicator kind of flat on the signal not exciting me too much our volatility index looks interesting and it would have pegged it breaking out a lot back in here but um you know i don't know what this coin does the the strongest thing about this chart that i do like is this on the weekly basis the 21 week is pushing up toward that 50 week it's above the ice uh, wayne gretzky be, would be happy we're over the thick ice no chance of falling underwater and drowning uh it's a bit of a sell-off here on this topping tail so i would um Keep an eye on that, but I'd want to research it a bit more. Uh, it says it's in the payments industry. A lot of people competing for that space. You know, you've got Solana, you've got Metis. There's a number of other ones. But uh, what I would normally do here is put an alert to see if it gets back above this price here that it's sold back off of and uh, and kind of watch it, maybe add it to a watch list. And uh, sorry, I got to remember to move this over. And then let me do this. I'll turn off my camera one more time and uh, we'll get back to a few more of these. And I'll put this away and I'll just pull up the chat here again to make sure if you guys have any questions, I can see them. I'm trying to juggle a lot of different things here. Maybe I should turn on my third, third screen. Um, let's see a couple comments here. I wasn't able to see. Why is your flag pulled to bottom? Different people draw it differently, Perry. I don't know. I've found that to play out. Some people draw it from the uh, top of the channel. Uh, I've seen it both ways. Uh, but you can, uh, I've seen it work and play out both ways. And so that's how I draw it. And that's worked well for me. Um, it would make the potential top much higher, but I don't think uh, you can Google that. But I've I've done, I've always drawn it at the bottom of that uh, flagpole. So as the uh, target, let's see, past copying tool and trading view. Great. A yes, exactly. United States and management corporation debt is not necessarily yours or ours. Um, South Africa was the S in BRICS. Thank you, Barry. I should know that. I used to speak down there a couple times a year. Like a public speaker does. Uh, uh, Joburg and um, Cape Town, beautiful town. Tony smiles. Says climate has always and will always change on its own. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's see. And uh, Perry says, I really hear anyone else talk about order blocks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and um, we won't go down a rabbit hole here. We have our own version of those in terms of money flow on our ERI indicator. The order blocks indicator I was showing is a different one. Uh, but these are what I want to mention here is that uh, while they're useful, the pros use order blocks on a real time basis. There's projects like high block and um there's a number of them i i've uninstalled them because they're super energy intensive day traders use them they move around a lot so these are ones that i i tend to use on a four hour chart and uh and then our version is this little the green box down here this is a uh, money coming in let me turn these off though i did want to share with you the atr so the atr is one of our indicators the average true range this is a dynamic average true range so basically you can see when it switches from exit to entry we can nail really good entry points another reason i'm not bullish on bitcoin at the moment is we flipped to the exit so i'd want to see this come down the neat thing about all of our indicators is you can set alerts on them so if i click on this and i go add alert on uh, it's it wants me to put me on the emas so let's turn these off for a minute there and there uh, and then on the ATR entry, you can also do, uh, I'll do it this way. So add the alert on the ATR entry. That's what I wanted. And I want to have an alert when it goes back to bullish on the four hour. I'm also going to do it once per bar close because I want to know every time on the four hour chart, we switch from ATR on a closing four bar basis. So on a closing basis on the four hour chart, every time we go from exit to entry, we'll get an alert and instead of so some people use it as a trailing stop i like to use it as a re-entry so buy atr and i'm gonna say four hour bitcoin and then for me say buy i like to change the message on these alerts because you know what happens you come in when the markets change you've got 10 alerts you can't remember what any of them are so next time the whole point is to try to catch it down here 
And um, the other thing that I'll add to this on the shorter time frame is our volatility index. And I shared that with you guys a little bit ago. But uh, this one, yep, there it is. It works great on these shorter time frames. So um, it, uh, it also was showing an exit right here, leaving the overbought territory. So when it goes back to the black color, there's it's reversing. So what we'd want to see is the vol index down below coming up out of it. It's just another con confirming indicator. And um, you can see that in our trade success checklist too. So if we're coming down, uh, we have all of these here, the volatility index, is it above the 20 line? Then that is another check mark. When we start seeing our score above three or four out of 19, it's looking very good. Uh, we, we're redoing this as we speak with better graphics, but uh, what I recommend new traders to do is, is get a hold of our indicators for one and then use this as a way to check these off. Is there a bell? The bell is our buy signal. The bag of money, that's a sell signal. Is the midline green? Boom. And you start seeing the score increasing, giving you more confidence. Bullish engulfing candles, candle at support, price above 2150 EMA. You're not going to usually have all of these. Rarely will you have all of these, but if you do get a score over 10 and over 19 up in that range, you're, you're good to go. Uh, the rocket candle we talked about, that's our favorite setup that we have a new indicator that shows when these trigger. Essentially, the rocket is a big real body sitting at support. Either the body's on the launch pad, as we call it, a 21 or 50 day EMA or week whatever period you're in, and a nice wick below it, kind of like a bottle rocket. You light the bottle, you light that fuse, the fuel's in the middle. Invariably, these things shoot up to the sky and run out of fuel and they come back down. Now, we're starting to experiment with other trend lines as the launch pad, but I really, I like it on the 21 or the 50. Uh, and this is a really high probability follow through that uh, I've noticed over the years. And so, you won't find anyone else talking about that. So there's some other event setups. We've cleaned this up a lot. Um, and uh, we have our radar, which I haven't really talked about and uh, probably should turn that on. The radar is a multi time frame and indicator that shows us what's going on in the marketplace in multiple time frames. Also bearish signals on the radar. So uh, guys, uh, it's still bullish on the monthly time frame, but we're going to come down for a couple of days maybe a couple of weeks here. This is what this is telling me. Mark my words. Okay. So high confidence in these. It's nice to sort of have the ability to say, all right, I trust my indicators. Uh, I don't need to mm, watch a thousand YouTube videos because frankly, a lot of those guys are wrong. And um, some of you know some of the stories, but I've embarrassed a number of these people <laughs> without intentionally wanting to do that. But uh yeah. Anyway, so well, let's continue on and um, let's see. Uh, I'm I just I'm reading your questions. Uh, and again, this is at moonstream.io slash free training for Thursday's event. While I read your question, the question is, is this true? Generally speaking, bull and bear, Bitcoin leads altcoins, leads micro coins. Yeah, I talked about that earlier, Perry, in the, the presentation. Um yeah, YouTubers, they're, they're always making money on recommending things or their sponsors. Uh, I won't say always. There's a couple of good ones out there, but they also make money on page views from YouTube. So they don't need to promote everything. No, nothing wrong with that. Just be aware. And uh, let me clean up our ch charts here a bit. The question was, which I had talked about earlier in this class, Bitcoin leads the markets. So we don't have time to talk about Bitcoin dominance in this class. I do in our M3 Active Trader tomorrow. So I um, mean, I will pull it up briefly, but we don't have, I've got a call coming up and we don't have a huge amount of time. Bitcoin dominance here, pushing higher. So, so generally what happens is, uh, and all this is, this, is, this is from last cycle, Bitcoin dominance pushes up higher and that means money's flowing into Bitcoin more than everything else, right? And then money starts flowing out of Bitcoin into ETH and the alts and uh, they rally and then the money flows out of the alts into the lower shit coins, et cetera. Uh, this moving average is a, let me make sure it's a good barometer. I believe this is going to be a 50, uh, that's, that's the 200 week, which essentially is a 50 month because there's four weeks in a month, but same, same. Um, Bitcoin dominance, interesting, right? So we have started to, this is interesting actually, 
I haven't looked at this in a while. We're going above that 200 week um, exponential moving average. And the last time we saw that was December of 2020. Now this hasn't lasted that long on, on this chart. So it's a little bit li limited in data. It's worth noting though, that that was the top of the market. It's not the top of the market now, but uh, if we start losing Bitcoin dominance here, money should flow into ETH and the alts, at least short term. So I'm going to head an alert on that. Uh, this is just kind of dubious speculation, as Ben Cowan says at this point, not something we normally play around with. Uh, there is another chart I have in the tomorrow's class where we look at Bitcoin dominance and some other moving averages, uh, and uh, we're, we're showing we're fine. But, um, you know, we could draw lines in the sand all day long, you guys. What do you want to do? I mean, you could do that, or you could draw a line here saying, well, no, clearly Bitcoin dominance is going up forever. If I can just get this trend line tool to work for me. So, um, you know, be careful of drawing lines in the sand. Uh, the We will watch carefully. A pullback is in order. And the point being money flowing out of Bitcoin goes into ETH. ETH dominance has been going sideways, topped out here. And will it run again? I, I think it will, but not as long as money's going into Bitcoin, predominantly not so much. And then money rotates out into things like USDT dominance. You know, uh, this has been in a solid uptrend. So, you know, we'll see. But uh, money coming out of USDT, where does it go? Into Bitcoin, into crypto. There you go. All right. Went down a bit of a rabbit hole there. And and uh, yeah, Perry, we, it's hard. It's easy to do. Draw lines in the sand everywhere. Um, I, I will just say, again, not, not to sound self-serving, I saw these indicators years ago and loved them and said sort of, out to the universe, as it were. I would love to work with this guy. Serendipity brought us together through a mutual friend. I, I was the found. I was the original founder of Options University. Uh, we taught tens of thousands of investors around the world uh, how to trade options and forex. Uh, I can barely spell forex, so I found the best people out there that knew it. Uh, I had the best option trader in the world. Used to be a floor trader on the so. I'm no stranger to selling trading tools and indicators and systems. Nothing has come close to these. So when my old friend and the guy that used to work for me at Options University reached out to me in December of 2020 and said, hey, what do you what do you have going on? What are you doing? I had uh, been building a very successful education company in another market that re relied on international travel. And COVID uh, uh, sort of had its own plans. So I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm in transition. He said, like, I want to bring you into this and I want you to meet this guy, Joe. And uh, I was like, I was like, this is the guy that makes those indicators. So Joe and I have polished these tremendously. Uh, I've come up with a few and uh, working with him. Uh, and so they're si incredibly simple and powerful. So I would encourage you guys all to be using these if for no other reason than to be timing your entries and exits better. There are nuances. Uh, this class, uh, we talk about them every week. And um, I probably should, uh, you know, we could do a couple more examples, but uh, the bottom line is they're, they're excellent. And uh, there's, you know, there's a number of them, but you get six as part of the package. The early reversal indicator, we have a new version coming out. And uh, the this and the trend strength indicator I showed you, the dynamic ATR, uh, the, tr the one that says entry and exit, the trend indicator is that key in the bell. So these are all, they're, they're tuned a little differently so that we wait for each to align. We start getting into positions if one or two of them hit. And as more of them align, add to those positions. So if you read my Facebook post that I shared that link to, Smart investors build positions and they exit in stages. You don't go all in and all out. That's not the way to do this. And uh, the way you have the confidence to build positions over time or even in swing trades is by having these uh, line up. And that's why we've created the uh, checklist here. So it's basically, all right, I'm looking at a trade. Do I have the ERI at least? Okay, we got that. Cool. Uh, we've got one. Uh, is the trend strength indicator green? and going above the 20 line. Those two are usually enough for me to get into a position. And then if the signal line also turns green, then I'm adding adding to that. And then the bell, if we get a bell on a daily or a weekly, I'm in. 
you know, and certainly uh, if we have other ones uh, that in there, like bullish engulfing candles on top of support, but this is about all we do. I, you know, I can, uh, I can draw Fibonacci's all day long. I draw some where I think it's helpful, but people get too carried away with those and relying on those and things like Elliott waves and all that, because you start doing this, you're like, Oh, Hey, look at this. It, it went right up to here. I just eyeballed that. But so what? You know, did that tell you where to get in and get out? Um, so let's not overcomplicate things. All right. Uh, what else can we do? Oh, helium coin. I wanted to look at that because we were talking about helium coin. Um, this, uh, I have a better chart of it, uh, not on KuCoin, um, but uh, it's worth noting that they're on KuCoin. A lot of these other, you know, Asian based exchanges that offer margin just realize that. Uh, they're going to get whipsawed because they're trading a lot on margin. Let's see, which EMA is this? So the the chart here, bear with me. That's not the chart I wanted. I want my, um, uh, wait a second. I got to go back here. I'm going to go back to my list and come down here. And then uh, the, the, the all these charts had different settings and I want to find the one that had my settings on it. Helium, KuCoin, let me do this. Come back here. Not that one. Buttons all over these things. Default there. Gotcha. That's what I wanted. All right, you guys. Let's take a look at Helium Coin. Love this project. Uh, this is one. Now, let's talk about what you guys were asking, too. The potential to old highs. We talk a lot about this in tomorrow's class. And if you want, if you like what you're seeing today and you want to join us, we'd love to have you. Just go to moonstream.io slash M3. Some different options there to get involved. But um, in terms of where could helium go? Exactly. So we have all those charts are already laid out, so I don't have them ready here. But this is this is an 11x helium coin, potentially, not financial advice. But back to its old highs, around 64, it's about 11. It's, it's a 10x from here. I would uh, turn on these EMAs. So it's got some support, maybe has to hold above this level around $5. Might resist here a bit. Here's what I would suggest own a thousand of these and just hold on to them. If you have a 10 X potential on these and it's a solid project, again, venture backed $111 million came into helium coin in 2020, 2022. This was our newsletter pick in July of 2021. And uh, it does, it doesn't show this goes back that far here, but it went all the way up around 50 or 60 from, I don't, I forget where that was. But uh, let me just do this here. We'll pull it up on another exchange where it has longer history. Helium coins was a little hard to get. Fortunately, you can get it uh, on, I think, Gemini now. And um, uh, you will uh, you can look around here. Let's see. Kraken has it. Uh, let's see. What am I looking for? Older history. Bitmart. Binance. Binance probably has a longer history on it. That is not what I wanted. Helium coin premium. Nope. Bear with me, guys. So here, Gemini. Uh, this is a weekly. There's Gemini basis. That can't be right. Did Gemini just find? Maybe Gemini just added helium recently. That could be it. This is very strange. Coinbase too. All right, I should have stayed on the uh, crack in there. I'll just go back to this one. Little longer history. All right, sorry about that, you guys. So bottom line is 10X potential. That looks pretty good. Tomorrow, we're going to show charts and examples of some of the coins I've identified that have 40X uh, and our home run. Our home run coin that went up 20,000% in 2021 has come down, is ready to run again. We're going to be watching that one as well. And so with that, you guys, I think that's about all that I wanted to share with you. Anything else you guys want to talk about? And actually, this is don't look at that. That's some new stuff we're playing around with. It's just going to make your eyeballs hurt. Uh, but uh, we're very involved in this, as you can see. And uh, we know what we're doing. Uh, we also look at the longer macro trends and time frames on these things. So about helium. Yeah, I mean, it's looking a little overbought right here. Let me open up on the weekly time frame. Uh, these indicators were great on the longer time frames, by the way. And uh, so on the weekly, it's still in an uptrend. It's a little overbought here on the trend strength indicator, but it can stay up there for a while. The red lining on the ERI, but we're coming out of a lower consolidation area. I think uh, helium is helium is one to add to 
own and add to, that would be um, my uh, recommendation to consider. Uh, I can't give you buy and sell advice, but uh, there you go. Uh, some good comments over here. Let me just catch up on these, you guys. And um, YouTubers have talked about that. Lines in the sand. Yeah. The indicators, Susie says, have made it so much easier for me to understand chart reading. Thank you. Thanks, Susie. Appreciate that. Uh, and you're getting it. That's glad I know you've come a long way. Um, 4X. Okay. Yeah. There you go, Perry. That's good enough. Uh, it's on Coinbase now, right? Question from Perry. What are exchanges for American located traders on smaller coins? Yeah. Uh, MEXC is one. Perry, MEXC. Um, I have to be careful. I'm not recommending that. It is uh, available there. There are also some um, some new DEX platforms. There's a new DEX that I we're looking at in the M3 class. That's a decentralized exchange, kind of like a DYDX, but it offers margin. And um, you know, but we don't have time to get into that today. So you could look at those two. Otherwise, otherwise, not many options. You know, uh, we used to be able to use KuCoin, BitGet, Bybit. Uh, Problem with these, just know this, is that they're um, they're manipulated. Uh, they they trade against their own traders, and that's why they're able to pay such high fees to the shills, as you said, the YouTubers to recommend them. It's they're not making their money just on trading fees; they're making their money on their advanced AI moving price around, and because they can see your stop losses, they can see your liquidation levels. That's why we also in our M3 group and our private clients, we recommend that third party software uh, that lets you set your stop losses and your trailing take profits. And just so e whether it goes down or up, it gets you out, but it doesn't always put it on the order books. So their AI isn't like always trying to find and take out your trade. So um, anyway, that's another class uh, we uh, I don't know that we'll do again. We used to do a day trading class called Sniper Trader. Decided not to do it anymore. It's too dangerous for you guys. So again, uh, if you're new here, I see a lot of new faces and names. So uh, thank you for being here. Hope you enjoyed it. We're going to wrap things up. I will answer some more questions. And uh, and uh, yeah, thank you, Perry. You're, you're welcome. Um, as uh, if, So cryptomastery.org, those are these indicators. You can read more about them. There's a way to get a free month. If you want to just do that for six months, they're very reasonably priced. We do these classes and uh, usually I do a little more training on the indicators, but we got carried away with all the market news this week. Uh, the next step in our training uh, journey here, if you'd like to call it that, is the Moonstream M3 Crypto. And uh, again, Thursday night, I'll be doing a training like this uh, about that or re reopening this. But you can sign up on the page here. You can learn more about uh uh, anything you'd like to. It includes the Crypto Mastery Indicators. And we have other uh, courses that we won't get into today, like our Retire Rich Inner Circle. Uh, but the free resources, uh, definitely go get a copy of the um, Success Trader Checklist. And uh, that was uh, all those linked to at Moonstream.io. And then, of course, um, Moonstream.io slash free training this Thursday night. And uh, really want to, you know what, guys, I want to, I'd love, I can't wait for six, 12 months from now. And we have a lot of, a lot more success stories. We built our business mostly in the bear market. That says a lot. Not many people left. Uh, we're, we've been waiting for this time. Now is the time to pay attention. And this pullback is a gift. Okay. So just if you leave with nothing else, we had this chart up a week ago and I'm not, I'm not just trying to preach to you. I'm just saying this pullback is exactly what we want. Pullback candy, and it'll come faster here. I just drew it out that way, but I think this takes us right up to, we'll move this out of the way. This takes us right up to that Fibonacci golden pocket here in the 15K, right? And then we might get more like this, but you know, this black rock, uh announcement this is just gonna you know that could just be an accelerant might get a bit of a sell the news but like i showed you we'll be at a hundred thousand in no time and that will be more risky don't be like i said in the facebook posts saying that this is signs of strength and chasing the herd 
uh, what do they say? Uh, yeah, don't be greedy. The pigs get fat, the hogs get slaughtered. Um, you know, now's the time to be getting in and uh, building positions because this this uptrend is great. I was a little concerned we would shoot up to 50k right away and then have a deeper pullback later. So uh, we'll keep an eye on it. But um, you know, we want to give some time, to let the bears have their turn. We'll watch our indicators for signals. It's time to get back in. The first one is the early reversal indicator arrow. You can see this is this triggered back here. This is a weekly basis. Uh, we do use them on the daily, but the weekly gives that longer term time frame. Triggered here, nailed the bottom on that. And uh, let me just see something. What was okay? And then the um, TSI and signal line lined up. And then let's look at uh, you know. Bollinger bands were widening, but um, let me just do this on the bull market support band. We talk about we'll talk about that tomorrow. So anyway, you guys, uh, it's not rocket science. Once you can kind of decode it and uh, and have the right tools to do it, so I think we had a good covered it all. Did well. I feel like we missed some things out. But we can never really cover all of what we want to on these classes because there's so much. Uh, where was the hot movers? Is there anything we missed? Uh, I don't know these projects. I don't want to pull them up. Alex Labs, Decentral, DG. Gaming's going to be big. Maybe what's the supplies decent? Market cap a little bit low. Uh, let's pull one more up. What do you say? Mm, DeFi Kingdoms. Don't know about these. So, you know, the, you know, the KuCoin, here's, let's, KuCoin's token is worth watching because obviously they make money. And I was trading this back in 2021. So, yeah, this thing never really sold off that hard. And, uh, I mean, look, it's got a nice upper trending channel there. What if we loaded our indicators on and see just for educational purposes, right? What do we have? All right, let's do a little training. I, I didn't really do a lot of training here today. Uh, for those of you who'd like to stick around. So basically, nice looking chart. This is a weekly uh, ERIs all through here. Once we have this trend line support, this is another great place we could have gotten in, had a small ERI arrow. Um, we have some new paradigm training for this coming out soon where each of these ERIs would be places to start building a position. OK, so, you know, the fact that this triggered and then went down a little bit down is not a, not a bad thing. Uh, I did a little bit of that last week, but uh, we'll touch on that next week. But here, so ERI, TSI, great example of the TSI going red to green over 20. The signal line also going green. And uh, I don't have the trend indicator on here. Why this is a different stochastics, but we had this vol index also go red to green or red into above 20. So uh, this was on the weekly timeframes, great signals. And so where could we go on this? This is where I would do a fib and just say, well, all right, what's target? I'd say probably the golden pocket here that right up to the old high. So you know, at this point is usually when I might say, all right, well, if that's the case and it goes back to the old high, what are the percentages? That's 100 percent potential. If it gets to the 1.618, 300 percent, 500 percent, 700 percent. So this is what a lot of what we do. And um, some of the, the the market calls we do in the other services and give those uh, trade uh, uh, take profit levels. But uh, what I'd be watching for here, just just because we pulled it up. Watch these uh, weekly crossovers. The bullish thing here, and this is uh, one thing to keep in mind, when these 21 and the 50 EMAs cross, the exponential moving averages, because the last time you saw that happen, uh, way back here, what happened? It went with vertical. Mm, these are clues, you guys. So, I mean, if that, you know, these coins, they all have their own personalities. And so once that crossover, if A, then B, that went up 10x. And uh, KuCoin has that potential because they 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 offer margin. They also trade their own token on margin. I think they'll pump this thing. If it went 10x from here, where would it go? You know, up to your around there. And then all I have to do is sort of say, hey, well, uh, does that coincide with the FIB level? 
maybe kind of sort of it's in that range. So there's a lot of opportunities out there. This isn't one on our top list, but um, just as an example, you can catch some good opportunities if you're on the uh, trading view hot movers list and you're kind of filtering these by um, and making sure they at least have, say, 20 million in uh, in market cap. You know, just as a barometer, you don't want to be trading things with a really low supply or uh, market cap. So a lot of these I don't remember or not, sorry, not that I remember, haven't seen, don't recognize. A lot of these are new. Helium coin down here. That's good. We talked about that today. There's a lot of these. If you had all the time in the world, you could look at all of them. We are working on some scanners for our indicators, which is going to give us uh, that ability to find things like rockets and uh, also TSI ERA overlaps. Anyway, throw a lot of acronyms at you guys today. And uh, yeah, we're, we're a year into the run, kind of, sort of, but it was um, kind of lost steam a bit. It started last December, went up 100%. We went sideways, sideways. So the, and that was a chart here. This is, I mean, sure, this was great since last year coming through this part of it. But where do we go back to? You know, we had some sideways action. This is these things kind of move in spurts here. We had like half the year from March to October just kind of went sideways and, and chop. Uh, though, so but we're we're in phase two of the bull finally. The phase one was kind of this early kind of stabilization coming out. We're in phase two, I think, and uh, we're ready for the parabola and uh, the ups, high upside. Um, you know, can't tell for certain, but the indicators will certainly help us. Uh, come to tomorrow's class. Sign up for M3 Active Trader if you want to see those on the monthly time frame, the weekly time frames. We've got some really good signals on what's coming. Uh, I think I am bullish on where we go from here. And uh, yeah, that's good, Perry. It is rocket science with the new rocket indicator. Yeah, you know that was just something that we just recently programmed uh, using Chat GPT for those tech nerds out there. Because previous to that. The I had just identified the pattern and the pattern looked like this rocket that I showed like that. But we with that indicator now, where did I put it, uh, can now show that. No, that's not it. Anyway, um, I had showed it to you guys briefly. I may have put it away, but uh, yeah, I just described it what i wanted in chat gpt and i said hey can you write this tweaked it a bit but uh yeah, link please the checklist um so the direct link to the checklist is moonstream.io and um myrene if you're still here do you have that direct link to the checklist because i'll use this one it's not as easy to remember but it's in the chat you guys it's cryptomastery.org um slash cm dash checklist that's kind of clumsy though we had uh we've got a different one here where is this moonstream.io and then you can scroll down below here and uh the image is missing so we just need to fish to fix that but uh we had a slight or shorter one i thought it was moonstream.io slash checklist let's see if i can find this uh yeah that's it moonstream.io slash checklist there you go easy peasy all right um any questions you guys i see a lot of names and faces here um please do join us thursday we're going to do uh some other site exciting stuff dive into some examples of where i see some big mover potential and uh, you can join us for free here. I, I promise it's not going to be like a super long PowerPoint. Uh, you know, I want to dive into it. But I have to keep it uh, cohesive so people can follow along. We'll do a little bit of background, but um, I really don't want to turn it into your standard uh, get on with it type of presentation. Okay. And uh, so you can register for that there. The longer, that's the longer link, moonstream.io, free training. And um, yeah, join us for that, please. Okay, everybody. Uh, thanks. I don't see any other questions. Uh, thanks for your comments. Um, we may just keep these classes open. It's uh, great to have all the feedback. And uh, thanks for all the M3 students that are joining us here today. And, uh, you know, um, like I said, be ready. We're waiting for those pullbacks. We will wait for our signals. 
this agree the next eri tsi uh that's when we'll be getting in back in the market i think that'll be an opportune place to do it so okay everybody thanks everyone take care we'll see you next week